Thank you and good evening. I would first like to thank everybody for the time to listen to this debate. Uh, I will be arguing on the negative side of the resolution that eating meat is wrong. This is a value proposition and the significant term to this value that I will be using is change. I will first start off with two points, then I will refute the two arguments that was made by my opponents. So the first point I'm going to start off with is that vegetarian and vegan diets do not contain the right amount of proteins and essential amino acids. So according to Mary Brown, a dietitian with a PhD in nutrition says that animal protein sources such as meat, fish, poultry, eggs, and dairy are all similar to the protein that is already found in your body. These are considered to be complete sources of protein because they contain all of the essential amino acids that your body needs to function effectively. On the contrary, plant proteins such as lentils, beans, and nuts are considered to be incomplete as they lack one or more of the essential amino acids that your body needs. So meat contains the essential amino acids to help you reach your body's necessary daily protein intake. And these are complete proteins, whereas vegetarian proteins or any plant-based protein, uh, they're gonna be lacking the proper essential amino, apps, amino acids to deliver you with complete proteins. And the second point that I'm gonna be talking about is that our bodies have evolved to consume meat and not be on a plant-based diet. So according to the Boston University professor, Richard Lorson, uh, three, stated that 3.5 million years of meat eating made us human and continue to make us healthy today. So this changed our digestive system. We evolved away from subsisting on low quality plant foods and instead required highly nutrient dense animal foods. We can't ferment large amounts of plant foods like our ancestors and our small intestines got longer. So this is where we extract the nutrition from the meat and our hindgut got shorter and this is where plant fer fermentation takes place. So we're a completely different species now that requires different nutrition. And so now I'm going to refute the arguments that was made by my opponent and the first argument she says she stated that the consumption of red meat has a clear link to cancer, heart disease, diabetes, and premature death. While I do agree that the overconsumption of red meat is not healthy for you, I'll argue that the correct amount of red meat is not harmful. According to Harvard Health Specialist, Dr. Hu says that the evidence shows that people with a relatively low intake have lower health risks. He says a general recommendation is that people should stick to no more than two to three servings per week. So, like I said, that the term that I'll be using for this is change. If people really want to be healthy, they should use red meat as a luxury food and not a staple in their diet. So her second argument was that the production of meat is harmful to the environment and how it contributes to the carbon emissions. So I do understand the huge toll that meat production causes on the environment. So that's why I'm more advocating on a stance for a worldwide change to sustainable livestock farming. Sustainable livestock farmers use a wide variety of practices, not only to raise animals humanely and produce better products, but they also um, build soil and sequester carbon, mitigating the effects of greenhouse gases. At the heart of sustainable livestock production is a well-managed pasture, forest, or rangeland where animals can move and graze freely. According to foodprint.org, a closed-loop pasture system takes advantage of animal waste as a beneficial fertilizer because it is at a scale that the land is able to absorb without the runoff common to the spread of large amounts of manure. So animals raised on pasture are generally healthier and under less stress than those raised in confinement. <clears throat> so animals, um, they have a widely varied diets that depend on the grasses and the other forage available in the area. So they're able to roam freely and express natural behaviors like rooting and scratching. Um, also cattle uh, rotated across pasture land encourage new growth 
while working manure and other natural fertilizers into the soil. And the theory is that when the animals are able to roam freely, they spread a natural fertilizer across the farm that uh, produces a extremely healthy soil that can trap that actually traps carbon dioxide from rising into the atmosphere, therefore reducing carbon emissions. Thanks.